most difficult part for me was wondering who was killed. Because a lot of these individuals are, I don't want to say it, but like my family, you know, I know the groups, I've seen them have their calves, I've known some of, the cat, some of these mothers since they were babies and now they have their own family. So yeah, that was the most difficult part. Since my return, I've been really impressed at how relaxed most of the elephants are. But then I don't know which ones witnessed the poaching incident in May of 2013. Elephants that I know are showing up, and I don't think it will, I'll be able to determine what animals have been killed for at least a couple of months. This is the most heavily used forest clearing in the Congo Basin, as you can see by the numbers here. And this is a typical day. It's not the exception. I've counted about 70 elephants today, and it's just the early part of the afternoon. A lot of males in the by today, so there's a lot of um, blustering and posing. Each one of them, especially the big ones, trying to prove themselves. Males tend to lead very solitary lives where the females are preoccupied with families. This is Kinktail too and her youngest calf. She's trying to keep the calf out of the hole while she gets the mineral rich water. But the calf is very persistent. So much for motherly love. And this is Miles. He's in must and he was observed um, mating a couple of days ago. I think he mated with 7th Tuskless 3, who already has one calf. But you can see his temporal glands are streaming. And this is the height of the must season, so we'll run into a lot of these bulls. You can actually smell them in the forest. They give a, a certain odor that is indicative of must males. It's sort of a peppery smell. And I've smelled it at least three times walking Zanga through the forest. Fortunately, we haven't run into any of these bulls because they can be hyper aggressive because they only have one thing on their minds. Because Miles is in must, he's the most dominant male in the clearing. All the other males will steer clear of him. He's going to displace this one bull in the pit. As you see, he has no problem getting other males out of the way. From my experience of over 20 years observing elephants in this clearing, I have found them to be extremely forgiving when um, under poaching pressure. They tend to clear out of the by for a couple of days, but gradually they start coming back in. The other times when we had coup d'etats, we would just sit and wait and listen to the radio That's and you know, 
get messages from people, but this time oh, it was serious. We had to leave. Oh, wow. Okay. A lot of work. They took everything. Okay. My situation is very unique because I've been there for so long. I mean, most people come in, they do you know, graduate work two years, and then they leave. And it's, yeah, they're connected to people, but they generally don't speak the lang local language that well. They don't know the little ruses that go on and, you know, the intrigue in the village. And because I've been there for so long, I mean, I know a lot about these people and, and their, you know, their joys and also their sorrows, but um, I find that's a really important part of my work. One of the people that's worked with me for many years, his name is Cecily, he's a, he's a Bayaka pygmy. We spent many hours at the clearing, and he once turned to me after we were watching some you know, wonderful bit of behavior between a mother and a calf, or a brother and a calf, and he turned to me and he said, these are not animals, these are people. And it was just like, he got it, he got it. And that made, you know, that made probably two decades of worth, worthwhile that one person was getting it. And this is the Elodi group. It's Elodi one, and she has three daughters. And today we're seeing the calf that has been born to her first daughter, which, who's standing in the back. And the baby's lying on the ground underneath her. This is her first calf, and I've known Elodi two since she was born. Elodi two's calf's less than a week old, because I saw her about 10 days ago, and I noted that she was pregnant. And he's a little male, so it's the first male in this group. He's taking a nap right now. He's probably pretty tired trying to keep up with all these females. I estimate the calf's less than a week old. He's pretty mobile, but he's very tiny. Now he's trying to get milk from his grandmother. It'd be interesting to see if she allows him to suckle. He's very spoiled because right now he's suckling from his grandmother, who's allowing him to do this. This isn't always the case, so he's going to be very well taken care of. This is Sappho 4 and her calf. She's tuskless. Her mother was poached in 2003. And since then, she's been traveling with her older sister, who has also has a calf, and sometimes her sub-adult brother. But she had her calf uh, shortly before I had to leave in 2013. She's been in the bye for the last couple of days, but I haven't seen her sister, so. I don't know if she's still alive. And this is Palm. I've known him for many years also. And he's one of the bigger tus biggest tuskers in the entire population. We've been really fortunate not to lose him because he's carrying a lot of ivory. And although Palm is a huge bull, he's not a very dominant bull. He's pretty timid. But I think it's his timidness that has probably saved him from being poached because he's pretty cautious. This is Leanne, too, and two of her calves. I've known her since she was also born, and she's had three calves since I've known her. And her latest one is now take a, taking a nap, very tired. Calves are the only ones that seem to lie down when they sleep. Just to see the involvement of families, the, the daughters and you know, the siblings discovering this new being in the group. Um, but just the gentleness of elephants, the, the, especially how tactile they are. They're always touching each other and they and and 
the emotions that they, they, they exhibit. I mean, people say, oh, they don't have emotions. Of course they have emotions. Let's not be foolish. It's all magical. I mean, every day is, is some new veneer that I'm being exposed to. So, I mean, yeah, it's just, a, it's just been a magical life, so to speak. I take it day by day. I mean, that's all you can do. Um, it's not real safe at present. Forest elephants are really in the most vulnerable state. I mean, the next couple of years are going to be critical.